Hello there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Super Cast Brothers Podcast. Yeah, we're here. Uh, this is our first Smash Dopey character of the new year. It's 2024, and uh, the Smash Topia Wiki has a bunch of characters on it now. We ended 2023, I'm sorry, 2022 with 200 characters on the wiki, and we're now, I think, 245? God damn. I mean, most of the ones that were out of this year were me. <laughs> and then some of them were, oh no, 248. We're at 248, actually. I just checked. And then we had some come up for the podcast, but god damn, there are too many characters. And that doesn't count times for like, you know, when we did Chrono with Turbo, and we realized none of our movesets jive, so there's three Chronos. That 248 does not, they don't count to one Chrono. So it's 248 different characters. This uh, is uh, quite a CSS image on the Smashtopia Wiki's front page. Yeah, uh, I wanted to make that image be wider and not just like tall but unfortunately the way the front page works with the graphic if i try to make it too much wider yeah. it gets cut off so yeah ah, we'll maybe, that. maybe if we had like our own proper website then we could make it how we want but we can't and i don't mm -hmm. have those skills i know people who have the skills from there it's just having the money <laughs> yeah <laughs> having yeah. the money and then to spend the money on that particularly <laughs> like it's like i've put i've thought about it a couple times it's like man i would love to do this uh basically mm -hmm. smashtopia 2.0 it's a website instead of just a wiki and then we have full control over the design of everything that's that's the dream not yet unfortunately <laughs> Sadly, I really want to, but it's a way to future proof the wiki too, because yeah. you just don't know like where where that host will go or um and it being a um free, like open source community based thing kind of uh squick squicks me out sometimes because we have people who openly edit the pages. It's like, well <laughs> Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll get an email from the, so like somebody edited this page and we can just like, all right. So what's the what's the flavor of evangelism today? And it's it's always something small. Like a couple weeks ago, I don't remember what the page was, but somebody edited a page. It just changed submitted by from me to whatever their name was. They changed nothing else. They just changed that. It's like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. And I had people, like, change some things in the, like, the character info. Or, like, they added in a couple extra fields. Like, on one of the stages, you know how Melee had both, like, here's the stage, what it's called. And, like, here's the world that it's in. How they did that on the CSS. Somebody added in, like, that field on one stage. I'm just like, listen, I like the idea, but I would have to do that to every single stage. No, thank you. No. That's the thing. Mm. Uh, it, it it would be nice because we have we would have full control, but it take it's they would take a lot of work. It would take a lot of work. The nice thing is, it's like if it could be designed and set up, then like once it's been set up and made, every and there's like a couple pages on there. Every other page is like okay, I just hit, I just like follow the format. I add every other stage. In the exact same format. Boom. Done. Easiness. But it's that initial setup that's going to be the problem. Mm -mm. At least you can initiate bans on um, IP addresses, though. Yep. Granted, I haven't done it. I've only done it, like, when there's been a repeat offender. If somebody just, like, edits one thing and then they fuck off, I'm just like, all right, that's your one. You do it again, or if you do something egregious... You're out. Because, you know, some people are just stupid. And hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. Stupid people do stupid things. But as long as they don't, like, I don't know, post, like, replace a character, like, replace Mario's picture with porn, 
Like, as long as you're not doing that, you're probably not going to get banned on your first event. Dude, I swear to God, I if anybody does that now, I fucking hate you. I will reveal now, live on Supercast Brothers, okay, our yeah. show of okay, many yeah. years, it has nothing to do with, with pornography, thankfully. I am blocked from the Smashtopia wiki. What? <laughs> I just checked. That's how I knew that there even were bands. Wait, how? <laughs> it says, it says, your username has been banned, or has been blocked. The block was made by Xantok. The reason given is inserting nonsense into pages. <laughs> oh my god. Were you si were you not signed in and just trolling a page? I probably. <laughs> okay. I don't know where the fuck to see the settings. Admin dashboard. <laughs> Let me drop uh, the the IP into this chat. Where would it be? User rights. <clears throat> I love the direness of it too. Expiration of block infinite. It also shows how long I haven't been on the on the wiki to upload something, because I was banned on November eighteenth, and I'm just now noticing. I don't know how to find the ban list on Wikia. <laughs> uh, <laughs> block the users. Hang on. Oh my God. Okay, yeah, yeah. I found I found the one. Okay. What for? What? What did you? You edited the. Ah. I see what you did. <laughs> you edited the Legionis Assistory page to say Legolas. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why did you do this? <laughs> Explain yourself, sir. This is one day, you know. You just feel it coming on. The names are similar enough, you know. It lends itself to to the edit. You you, you know, change every time. instance of the Legionis word to yeah. Legolas, which also broke the image links. <laughs> the van stays. <laughs> the ban stays until you are ready to post a lot of shit. Oh my gosh. Until you have a bunch oh. of stuff ready to go, the ban stays. Oh my god. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, what man. is wrong with you? I think you even mentioned that troll in particular one day. Not on this podcast, but maybe in our chat or something. Yeah, yeah, I did. I just did a like, search for Legolas in our chat. It's like somebody edited the Legion's history page and says, Oh, this is a Legion, Mr. Legolas. Why? Mysteriously, uh, it like, went unresponded to. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know what? You know what comes next is the, is the Legolas moveset. I mean, you That'll could make nice. one. It wouldn't be my first choice for a Lord of the Rings character, but then uh, my first choice for a Star Wars character would have been Din the Jar and either. Yeah, you did that. I did. My choice would have been Darth Vader, just so we have that on the record. There you go. Um Yeah, my my first Lord of the Rings choice would probably be Mary. Oh, I was I was thinking M A R Y. I was like, who the hell is Mary? <laughs> wrong Mary. Yes, wrong Mary. Mary Talking about the one that dances around and jumps on Frodo's bed. 
Well, I mean, both him and Nathan do that. They do. They, I mean, it would be a swap off, of course. It'd be all to each other. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that makes sense. That there's really mm -hmm. only like a small portion of at least the movies. I'm not sure about the books where they're apart from each other. And it's like ah, they have the same capabilities. Stuck it. Yep. The only thing that's Indeed. different is that one of them goes to Boromir's city, whose name I totally remember, and um, is an idiot with Denethor. Yep. And which one of them it is? I don't know. I don't know which one of them did it. I think it was Pippin. I don't know. I don't know. One of them was an idiot there, and one of them was an idiot in the cave dancing around. The cave? Where the um where the Balrog was. Like they made a noise and that's what cued off all the Oh, I thought you were saying at the same time that one was in that city. No, no, no. The other one was dancing. He was like, no. I don't remember that. <laughs> what? Really good fiction about walking. Sure. Where, then there's, where... tree, there's tree people, yeah. Hey, there's a Gollum video game. Where's the Gollum moveset? <laughs> I would say don't threaten me with a good only uploaded seven Damn submissions. It. Why did we not nominate that game for the fourth Sunday to play a game ball? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Shit! <laughs> what console is that even on? Steam. I know it's on Steam. It's Shit, on PS4, it's on I think. I think it's on everything. Like, it's on Switch. I mean, listen, with that budget, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. currently 70%. This game is normally priced fifty dollars. Yes. Yes. Holy yes, it is. balls! And it's currently on sale on Steam for seventy percent off. That thing. That's the. That's what the normal price should be. Holy! There. Why is there DLC? Oh, I'm sorry. Not DLC. It's. It's. Voiceover DLC, a lore compendium, an emote pack. Emote pack? Oh. You can have Gollum okay. do emotes. Okay. Wow. You know, I think that that studio was folded onto and, and no longer exists after developing that one game. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. Fucking God. All right. Uh, next topic. Moving on. Uh, hi, it's a Smashtopia episode. John was banned from the Smashtopia wiki, and he deserves it. <laughs> and I, I'm not, uh, I'm not lifting that ban yet. I'm going to leave it in place for a while. You know what you did. You know what you did. <laughs> on November 18th of last year. Yep. It's it's been quite some time. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what do we do on Smashtopia episodes again? It's been a while. It's been it's been six weeks. You uh, talk about things you put on the wiki I'm banned from in the first little part. Wait, are you not? Are wait? Are, can you view the wiki, or can you just not edit? I cannot do anything. You can't even view it, so you can't even talk about your showcases for today. No. Is this a ploy to get me to unban you? No. I don't know I if I believe that. I can't. <laughs> you can't view any page. No, I went to the first one I want to showcase and it's not showing me anything. God damn it. It's fucking blank. Oh my gosh. Um, page. But you you can um refresh okay. the page. Okay. Let me refresh the page. Uh okay. I can see it now. You can always reinstitute the ban after the episode is over. <laughs> oh, am I first? <laughs> yeah, now you are. <laughs> okay. 
welcome to the world of the Smashtopia Wiki, where we are both clear to post and view articles. Yeah. Um, yeah. Enter the world of Aura Aura Climber. You remember that game, don't you? Never played it. Never heard of it. It was on the 3DS. Uh, it was on the DSi. It was on the DSi eShop. It was That's DSi. Why. I never owned one of those because it, it was stupid. You, uh, you missed out on nothing. Uh, the DSi goes in the same bargain bin as the Game Boy Micro. Why does this exist? Oh, the Game Boy Micro is so bad. Yeah. It's out of, yeah. out of place. Um... Well, let me introduce you. Aura Aura is a hapless fallen star, simply doing their best to return to the sky. They their attempts to what? Wow, I wrote. I noticed several typos. I can do good and edit this to look correct. Um, but they attempt to sling themselves into the sky. Uh, essentially, it's it's like a doodle jump. It's an, it's an endless jump game that Nintendo. What the fuck developed. is a doodle jump? Old old school mobile game. <laughs> yeah, I don't do those. It's vertic it's limitless board the platforms. But oh. vertical. Why? And you're a star who jumps. It's uh it's the game from Super Mario sixty four DS's mini games where Mario's falling and you have to do the trampolines, but in reverse. I don't know why you think I know what that is. It's a Mario game. You like Mario. You know that guy. I didn't see Mario teaches typing either. <laughs> That's too bad. It's the first game that Charles Martinet ever voiced. Um, but yeah, it's it's a little little star that fell from the sky and it's jump leaping into the air to return to the sky. At the end. Um, it's an item. I have Aura Aura as an item. Similar to the hothead, Aura Aura sits in place until they're picked up. Once thrown, they immediately jettison upwards. And this is about one and a half Bowsers in height. You know, the uh, very accurate character-based uh, height system that we have going here. Uh, anyone who touches Aura Aura during their ascent will be dealt minor fire damage. Aura Aura will continue to leap upwards after this, continuing to jump higher and higher with each subsequent leap. From the second jump onward... Aura Aura will squint their eyes and release a fiery shield that travels about a Kirby in circumference and dishes out additional damage. And uh, once they've leapt as far as the stage will permit them to, they ascend back into the sky and complete their mission in the process. So essentially the Aura Aura KOs itself by going past the blast line. Yes. Horrifying. Yeah. Truly horrifying. What happens if it's under an obstacle that you can't be passed through normally? Because they just pass through all obstacles? Or do they just like... No, it would eventually just disappear. Like it just, it becomes more and more intense as time goes on, but then they poof. Okay. Yeah. Poor you. you. You didn't let Aura Aura ascend to the sky. Sure didn't. So... My first showcase, uh, you know, ironically enough, ironically enough, uh, nah, you know, nah, I can't really make that work. I mean, I could, but that would take too much explanation. Uh, it's a new stage from Minecraft? Yep. Listen, Minecraft gave us a smash stage of Minecraft World where it's like, hey, look at all the different biomes. That's not all the biomes. Not even all the regular biomes. It's like, yeah, here's like six but uh there, there's there's two other locations in minecraft that are rather iconic one of them is boring as hell and the other one is the nether which is a little bit less boring but still mm -hmm. i mean it can be exciting i suppose but you know you gotta you gotta make yourself a portal you gotta go through the portal and suddenly you find yourself in hell that's that's what the biome is called in the game. It's it's literally coded as hell. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. It exists. It's a lava-filled death death trap. And there are different kinds of monsters in it. And there's these uh, little glowing rocks that cling from the ceiling. 
But I decided, you know what, let's make this place into a stage. Why not? I think it'd be more fun than just having Minecraft World. Not that Minecraft World is a bad stage. But now there mm -hmm. is, uh, there's certainly room for it to be its own unique thing. Mm -hmm. So what I have here, uh, we have a grounded stage. Relatively simple in its design. Uh, its ceiling is completely enclosed, generally speaking. Uh, so it's like a whole big cave ceiling up the top. But there are these two big chunks of glowstone. Uh, sometimes the stage can um, vary up a little bit uh, whenever it's loaded up. So it might just be one chunk that's larger in general size or just two smaller chunks off to the sides of each other. Uh, they, they vary in size. They vary in shape. And their general position up along the ceiling as well. Every time you load it, you know, a little different, a little bit more fun that way. These blocks represent the glowstone blocks from the from the nether, and they can be attacked and destroyed. Uh, when you do destroy them, you open up a little hole in the ceiling that characters can be launched up through. So, you know, there's still that option to be able to throw characters up, but you gotta, you gotta earn it first. Kind of like Mishima Dojo, where you gotta break down the walls to kill anybody, mm -hmm. except these bits of glowstone take a lot more hits than it takes to destroy the Mishima Dojo walls. Because those walls are pitiful. To be fair, they kind of have to with how that stage is designed. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, the glowstone will not uh, re won't reform itself. Once it's destroyed, it's gone. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, there's also two platforms over to the left and right that hang uh, midair on the screen and that walk up to the blast zones. Uh, these platforms, uh, they they can't be passed through. They're just they they are solid, and they can also vary a little bit in terms of the height, so they can be a little bit lower, a little bit higher. Uh, every time like a stage gets played on, uh, if, if you're playing on the stage when hazards are turned off, the glowstone will always be in fixed positions, matching more or less matching what's in the stage design. So you still have to break through it. But the lava trap that's down at the bottom, because yep, the red line is. Obviously, lava, shock, it's the fucking nether, what do you expect? Uh, the lava would not be there <laughs> when hatchets are turned off. Uh, additionally, uh, the lava can also become, you know, it's a lot of things on this stage can vary depending on, because it's a fucking Minecraft stage, so I figured let's, let's have some fun. Things can have slight differences, so the lava could be like a little bit longer, a little bit shorter whenever you play on it. Uh, but then that's a final twist, the ghast. From Minecraft can appear as a uh, stage hazard flying in from the left or right side of the stage and it behaves um you know pretty much like it does in Minecraft it will slowly drift through it can shoot out a fireball from its mouth uh, with a terrifying scream sound uh, aiming towards any fire in particular they can be attacked and defeated and their fireballs can even be reflected back with a melee attack to send the fireball flying right back at the ghast uh, when they're hit by their own fireballs, it actually takes an increased amount of damage to them than what a normal attack would do. So if you want to kill a gas real quick, just reflect this attack back at it instead of hitting it with your own normal attacks. You'll end up doing um, you'll end up doing more damage and you'll kill them faster. They'll come back eventually, though. Indeed. Uh, it's got music from Minecraft. It's got music from Minecraft Dungeons. And what's... Wait, hold on. What's this? There's a character that uses as its home stage? Wait, but I thought Steve was the only Minecraft character in Smash. Oh, wait, what? Last year, didn't I make a moveset for Alex to split her off separately from Steve? I sure did! <laughs> Which is largely designed off of my original Steve moveset I made for him before he was revealed for Smash. I was just like, alright Sakura, you may have made a better moveset, but I can still salvage this. I can salvage this. I can still make my own thing. And I did. That's not who my second showcase of the day will be. I feel like I might have already done her as a showcase maybe last season. I don't remember. But if I haven't, I'm sure I will someday. Sure will. And that's hell. I mean, the nether. It's nice this time of year. Michigan. Yep. Um, I also have a stage. This one's in the overworld. Fairly green. Of Minecraft? No, but it's close. It's, it's a Donkey Kong stage. I don't know how that's close to Minecraft. Yeah, me either. Donkey Kong 3, in fact. 
where you play as Stanley the Bugman. You know the guy. I do know the guy. Everyone's famous favorite character, Mario's cousin, the yeah, exterminator. We, uh, wait, Mario? Yeah, Mario has two cousins in, in canon, Stanley and Marty. Who the fuck is Marty? The bricklayer. Is this in just like the Mario comic line? Mario Cement Factory on, on Game & Watch. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> But um, yeah, DK. You know, he he had he's had his moments, and in this moment, he loves Stanley's greenhouse. You know, where uh, there's like bugs that are there, and Donkey Kong's jumping around and shaking the the bug hive and letting them loose in Stanley's greenhouse. And Stanley doesn't like that, so he does what anyone would do and sprays a mammal with toxic chemicals. That to get sense. them to leave the the greenhouse. I mean, listen, um, if somebody's spraying no, insecticide in my face, I'd probably leave too. Uh, this it is works. True. It seems effective. <laughs> and and they're also carnivorous bugs. Like they fucking eat Stanley if Stanley doesn't get rid of them. What the fuck? Yeah, so, I mean, it's kind of terrifying to watch when you play the game too. And they all, they they're very fast when they when they are hungry and they just go at them like dive bombing. Um, anywho, Stanley's greenhouse greenhouse is the stage, uh, and just like in Donkey Kong, so this is you know looks like it does in in the arcade version of the game, and just like in Donkey Kong Three, the greenhouse is split into three rounds. So it's essentially a port of the arcade game uh, with eight bit sprites. Um, present as the action unfurls. So like Duck Hunt, kind of. Um, Stanley's there, and he leaps and jumps around hazards while shooting 8-bit Donkey Kong, classic Kong, if you will, with his spray. And DK... Wait, no. in well, I, thought, I thought that was Junior, not classic DK. No, no, it's it's classic DK. Mm-hmm. And DK3... I thought, but uh, I mean, hmm. Okay. I think Junior. I think Junior's in DK three, but I don't know to what capacity. Um. But yeah, Donkey Kong in the, uh, will also be a hazard who is knocking around beehives and throwing coconuts around, trying to stop Stanley. Uh, bugs are traveling around the greenhouse too, and they're hazards for the fighters as well as Stanley. Uh, round one features three platforms to duke it out on. With the bottom most being about the size of like one and a half times the size of Battlefield. Um, and each concurrent round, the, the platforms become slightly smaller. Um, round two also has vines that you can fight on. There's a DK Jr. reference. Um, and large wooden platforms. And round three is similar to round one, but features four platforms instead of three with, with the middle one chopped in half. Um, and, and some drop-off walls. So Stanley does inevitably defeat DK in each round and sending him, sends him flying to the next one. Um, and each round tends to land about 30 seconds. So within a general two-minute match of Smash, you will see every round. Okay. Um, once DK is defeated, his sprite will leap into the air and the screen shifts over into the next round. Um, there will be like a split second or two where you're fighting in a transitional area, kind of like Castle Siege, and you're on to the next one. There you go. All right. Simple enough and works for me. Mm hmm. Maybe Stanley Keats it as his home stage. He could. There's a. There, or maybe the Kabuto Mushi could. The what? The Kabuto Mushi. Why are we talking about Beetle fighting? Because it's one of the many bugs that are littered around the stage. Oh. Yeah. Um, and Busbees, Creepies, Super Bees, Vine Eaters, Bee Spies, Attackers, Kabutomushi, and Butterflies. I feel like Kabutomushi and Butterflies don't quite fit with everything else, but they're there. Yeah. That's... Vine Eaters are essentially piranha plants. Wait. 
The Kabutamushi is the beetle from Mario RPG's minigame. Is it? Look at that sprite and tell me I'm wrong. No, you're right. That's interesting. The more you know. <laughs> Well, good times. Good times. Good times. You know what else? Know. You know what else is a good time? Hmm. I'll tell you. Street Fighter is a good time. What if yeah. Smash got another Street Fighter character, and I don't mean a fucking Echo. Seth. I, oh, the... <laughs> no, not not Seth. Absolutely not Seth. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You could have said fucking Dalsim or oh, love M. Bison. Yeah. You could have said Alex. Yeah. You could have said Sean. Mm -hmm. You could have said fucking Chun Li. You could have said Luke. Yeah. You could have said Kimberly. Or yeah, Laura. Yeah. Or Nicole. Mm -hmm. Don't say Nicole. <laughs> Don't say Hakan. Don't say a con. <laughs> Jesus fuck. Uh, I like Street Fighter though. Um, I've only played two Street Fighter games. However, I played Street Fighter two and I played Street Fighter four. And the Street Fighter character that I made a move set for is not from Damn. either of those games. Oh, nope. I went with somebody else because damn it, Rashid is fucking cool. Listen, is cool. you can't tell him this man isn't cool. Look at look at this guy, that this this Middle Eastern guy that could do all these flips and spins and control the wind. Fuck yeah, I'm into it. Uh, for sure. Besides, like he of of the new characters for Street Fighter Five, he was I think he's like the one that's most involved in the story, at least like from a from a protagonist perspective. Uh, he ends up. I believe team with Ryu a few times trying to find out, hey, my friend got kidnapped with the F man, and that's his whole reason for being in the plot. Uh, but I like him. I think he's cool, and I'm just like, fuck it. I'm going to make a move set for this guy, and I did. So, nice. for his entrance, you know, there's a swirling tornado on the screen, and it's starting to fade away, and it reveals that he was doing, like, flips and kicks that were generating the tornado the whole time, and now that's ready for the fight to start, he kind of has to, like, stop and, you know, actually prepare the fight for the tornado calms down. Uh, the Kirby hat. Kirby wears his uh, hat, which I believe is called a Shemog. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Uh, but he wears the hat around his entire body, because that's just funny. And he also has the little green um, eyepiece that Rashid has. Mm -hmm. He wears it over his eye. Nice. For his taunts, uh, the first one is that Rashid will face towards the screen and strike a wide stance similar to his uh, taunt pose in Street Fighter V, uh, where he'll cross his arms in front of him, stick with his tongue, and say, yeah, or however he says it. Uh, for his down taunt, Rashid will perform a short break dancing routine on the stage as little wisps of wind fly around his feet. And then his side taunt, cloud-like streaks of wind will swirl all around Rashid's body for a quick couple seconds. Similar to when he activates his V trigger in Street Fighter V. Nice. And then for victory poses, uh, the first one, Rashid will run in from the side of the screen, performing a couple flips as he does until he reaches the middle of the screen, where he'll gesture towards the camera with one arm pointed straight forward and the other pulled back a bit, while also towards the camera. Uh, very similar to his victory animation in Street Fighter V. For a second. Sweet. Rashid will spin around in place on the screen as a, tornado, as a tornado engulfs the entire lower half of his body. Rashid will rise up into the air, laughing as the camera zooms on in his face. And then the final one, Rashid will be talking on his cell phone for a couple seconds before he grimaces and tosses the phone away. As he does this, Rashid will say, that's a wrap, folks. <laughs> I don't remember where I got that from. I made this like halfway in 2023, so I don't remember the origin of that. But I made it. But if I he don't... said, I am Rashid. No. Hmm. Okay. No. This is not that. Uh, <laughs> so, moveset. Wow, there's a lot of words here. 
Why did I tie it this much? Because it's a Street Fighter character. But basically, you know, his texts are just pulling out straight from Street Fighter, and much like with Ryu and Ken, uh, there's the inputs that you can do uh, to actually these stronger versions of all of these moves, or at least most of them. But for Sam Special, it's Whirlwind Shot. Rashid will spin around and literally kick the air up as he turns back around. Uh, this wind, the wind that he kicks up will manifest into a small Kirby-sized Whirlwind, which flies on a sharp arc up into the air. So, a uh, bit unusual for Sam Special because it's actually sending the attack upwards as a projectile. Uh, but you can tilt the control stick forwards to influence the direction of the whirlwind to make it fly a little bit further horizontal before it sharply turns upwards into the air. No matter what, it's still going to go up into the air because that's what the attack does. Uh, once this whirlwind hits an opponent, uh, it only hits them once. And it they doesn't even do um, a very much knockback. It's relatively weak. But he is capable of firing out two whirlwind shots back to back. It can alter both of their trajectories with quick enough timing to make them fly in different, uh, different flight paths. For a side special, Eagle Spike. Actually, wait, let me. Uh, when you're doing the stronger um, input variant of the move, uh, the two. Ah, here it is. The Whirlwind will fly, uh, but the Whirlwinds now deal um, actually hit an opponent twice per Whirlwind, with the trade off being that each hit now individually does less damage than the normal version. But if you get hit by both attacks, it's about 1.5 times the normal damage. Uh, then for your side special, Eagle Spike. Rashid will hold his arms back as if they were wings, but he launches himself forwards in a straight line with a flying kick attack. This attack will hit hard and is Rashid's best damaging move out of his four specials. That said, there's some identifying delay on the attack as Rashid gets into a position so that his opponents know, hey, he's going to do the thing. Uh, Rashid can even charge up the attack to increase efficiency flies, go a maximum of a third of final distance, or from, uh, from a third of final destination all the way to the full length depending on how far it's charged up. If you use the special move while Rashid is pressed up against a wall, he will push himself off the wall and deal a minor amount of damage to it if it's a wall that can be attacked, such as the ones on Luigi's Mansion, uh, Mishima Doja, or Shadow Moses Island, before he flies forward. When you do it this way, uh, the damage from the attack actually would increase by a small amount as he's uh, added a little bit of extra oomph to uh, the force of his attack. Mm -hmm. If you use this attack in the air, he will instead dive downwards diagonally instead of flying straight forwards. And if Rashid makes contact with the ground while using the aerial version of this attack, you can have him bounce off the surface with a well-timed press of the special input to continue his flight path uh, for whatever distance it had left. And then again, nice. you can do the input to increase the damage of the attack, and you do this uh, while the attack is increased. The move distance will be capped at two thirds final destination, so you can go less far, but more damage. I'll just notice a typo he's a fix on there. Yay! I'll take care of that. <laughs> yeah, fun. Uh, for the up section, we have Spinning Mixer. Rashid will extend his arms out to his sides as winds whip up around his body in the shape of a tornado, propelling him upwards into the air, like I mentioned for that one victory pose. Uh, by tilting control stick, you can have Rashid angle the trajectory diagonally to a degree, but you cannot do pure horizontal movement. If you want to do that, use the side special. Uh, opponents that get hit by this attack can be can be hit by multiple hits of smaller damage and can be carried up along with Rashid into the air if he hits them just right. When this attack is at its end, Rashid will spin one last time to launch opponents away, and then it again casts its own special input that you can increase to do a variant of the attack. Uh, doing this will increase the damage of each hit, as well as the, as well as the distance that Rashid can fly. Down special nice. is Isar, which I may be mispronouncing. For this move, Rashid will seem to perform a short dance and spin about in place as he kicks up a tornado of wind, which travels forward slowly for a short distance. This tornado only deals a small amount of damage on contact, but it is both a projectile, making it reflectable, and is able to reflect other projectiles as well at 1.2 times damage. So, a bit interesting in that regard. Rashid can only have one of these kinds of projectiles on the stage at a time. If he tries to make a second, the first will dissipate. If two opposing Isar tornadoes clash, they will cancel each other out. Neither will be reflected, they will just vanish. Uh, items that are in the tornado's path will be picked up and carried before being scattered around haphazardly a short distance away from where the tornado ended up. 
And while opponents cannot pass through the tornado, Rashid is able to walk right through them as if they're not even there, which makes him act as a bit of a shield for him. There's a lot of different utility with that special. Nice. For Rashid's final smash, we have Altair. Rashid will spin and drain the tornado around his body, which quickly consumes him and creates a tall column of tornadic winds that stretch above and below his body. For most stages, this column will, this column will stretch the top and bottom of the entire stage. Uh, for certain very large or colossal stages, like uh, Palutena's Temple, for example, it might not quite reach the top or bottom of the stage at all. It'll just be somewhere in the middle, depending on whatever the heck he was standing when he used the special. This wind column will only exist for a couple of seconds, and any opponent that makes contact with it will become trapped within. These fights will find themselves pulled into a cinematic with Rashid on a desert plain, where they can be seen swirling to the wind column, looking absolutely terrified, taking constant hits of damage. They're, they're, they're going to Narnia, or not Narnia, fuck, they're going to Oz, folks. They are <laughs> going to Oz. The camera yeah. will then pan to Rashid, who is controlling the tornado from within, as he has a wide grin on his face, like he is fucking into this shit. As this occurs, the tornado <laughs> will begin to recede, and all the fighters who are trapped with sin will be flung to the far reaches of wherever before the final smash comes to an end and transitions back to the fight. Sweet. So, like, a lot of cinematics, you know, they have that triggering hit, but usually it's just like, oh, yeah, they just hit whatever's in front of them, or they do a dash forward. This one's like, no, anything above or below Rashid gets pulled into the cinematic, because Tornado. Tornado. Uh, Got it. For our extra skill, we have Front Flip, which probably sounds really boring, and, well, I had I had struggles finding the extra <laughs> skill. Uh, with an excited Yahoo! Uh, here's another type I'm going to fix. Uh, Rashid will perform a front flip as he leaps from the ground and propels himself forwards. This move is similar in the essence to Zero to Samus' flip jump, however, there's a few differences. The first is that Rashid sacrifices vertical distance for horizontal as he performs his flip, and Rashid also would not do any damage with his attack, nor can he <clears> switch <throat> to another attack that homes in on the opponent like Zero to Samus is capable of. The trade-off, though, is that while this move is called front flip, Rashid is also capable of performing the move backwards, with the control stick is tilted back just as Rashid begins the move. This makes front flip a uh, more of a recovery or utility move than a damaging attack. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, works. And then for some unique traits, he can wall jump, he can crawl, and like other Street Fighter characters, uh, if he's in a one-on-one -on -one match, then he will always face in the direction of his opponent. Um, <clears throat> he's a he's a cool guy. He's that is a that is a great great design, great background with the like wind based powers and the and the dance moves. He's a, I haven't had the opportunity to actually, to play as Rashid. I haven't played any of the games he's in yet, but I would like to change that. Yeah, maybe okay. this year. It's like I've only seen gameplay clips, but the band looks cool, and I like seeing his attacks. They're nice. Mm -hmm. Like Street Fighter Four, like not every character is cool. But Rashid is cool. Laura is cool. Uh, Kimberly, actually, no, Kimberly. Kimberly is actually from Six. Uh, mm -hmm. I was looking at my alts because uh, I had all of Rashid's alts based off of characters that were new to Street Fighter Five and Six because he was first mm -hmm. introduced in Five and he's he returned in Six, one of the playable characters. So he gets alphas based off of them, based off of Abigail, Colin, Laura, Fang, uh, Luke. Where Luke is only in Street Fighter Four in Street Fighter Five because they needed more time for Street Fighter Six, and he was just like, it's "Like, okay, we're gonna add the Street Fighter Six protagonist as the last DLC character for Five because we don't know what else to do." Like that last right. DLC pack was not was not originally supposed to happen, and then the Captain mm -hmm. was like, "Uh oh, uh, emergency switch, one last DLC pack." Here, <laughs> here's a <laughs> teaser of our next game with Luke. Mm-hmm. And then his Neat. home stage is of course Skies of Honor, which is his uh his the stage that is dedicated to him in Street Fighter V. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, that's Rashid. That's Rashid. Sounds like we're uh ready to get into someone else who 
has a bit of a green motif to them. Yes. Blanca from Street Fighter 2. It's about time. Hell yeah. I'd love me some Blanca. I wanted Blanca in since 64. Okay. Yeah. In actuality, uh, as you can tell from the title of the episode, because, haha, it's spoilers. We are making a moose for a character called Pico. Who the hell is Pico? Well, it's not that kid from Newgrounds, I can tell you that much. <laughs> I got the reaction I was looking for. Hell yes. yes. <laughs> uh, no, Pico is from F-Zero. And we've kind of talked about him a bit on the podcast before. Just like when we try to think of like, oh, who's a, who's the F-Zero character we could get that's not Black Shadow or Sam McGurra? We kind of landed on Pico as like who our choice would be. And we... We, he, I think it was mainly me that was kind of pushing the wrestling aspect. Like just looking at like, looking at his body build, it's like, oh, yeah, this mm-hmm. guy looks like he could do wrestling moves. And then I started researching the character. I'm just like, oh, actually, wrestling does not make sense. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> He's a bit sadistic. He's a and, bit uh... of a psychopath, and he uses guns and knives. Like shit. Fuck. Yep. But I, I still kept a little bit of the wrestling flair that I had previously pitched, but Me I did too. not go hard on it. It's it's very much. <laughs> I, I made him be in in the end. He's very much in a similar vein to what I designed for Black Shadow and Sam Margoro, where like I kind of made them mirror Captain Falcon. We were like, okay, so Black Shadow has a Falcon Punch type move, but it's with darkness. Sam Margoro's a Falcon Punch type move, but it's with poison. And I did something similar for Pika, but we'll get to that point. Mm-hmm. We will. We will. He he is a uh, very militant turtle man. He's an assassin. Yes. He's an assassin that specializes yes, in rifles, pistols, and knives. It's like, oh, uh, I don't think I'm going to go hard on the guns, but all right. And he's obsessed with blood. And talking about blood and living in blood and eating blood. I mean, who doesn't like to eat blood? Ain't that the truth? It's it's just so good. <laughs> you would fit in right in with the people of Deathwind, it's, it turns out. Yeah, it's, those yeah, are my boys. It's... Yeah, the Puro Potos. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that being said... Let's let's see what we came up with here. Let's do that. Uh, taunts, as always. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Entrance. we got to enter into it with the entrance animation. Mm-hmm. What you got? Pico rides in on the wild goose and hops out. Yeah, same. <laughs> there, there are some things. Why, why would you change that about the yeah. next character? Yeah, I feel mm-hmm. like, like some things you can be experimental with, but I feel like uh, with rare exception, every Pokemon is going to pop out of some kind of Pokeball. And with rare exception, every F-Zero character is going to be just jump out of their F-Zero machine. <clears throat> or have it crash on the stage, which I think is what I did for Samurai Cobra. <laughs> nice. Um, um, Kirby hat. Speaking of getting experimental. Oh, no. Kirby becomes green. With a beak, yellow eyes, and a pico-shaped head. I I have I had to say no to the turning green part, because what if you have multiple Kirby's? Oh, true. This, this is the same problem I have with uh, the Game and Watch Kirby hat. It's like, what if there's multiple Kirby's? Mm-hmm. Why are we just having Kirby become black? I don't. This is bad. But my my is like kind of like the. Um, I never know how to describe this, but you know the ones where it's like like with Pikachu and Charizard, where he just like he wears like a hat that's like the top of their head on top of his head. Yeah. I don't know what to call that, but it's that. So it's just like he just wears what looks like the top of Pico's head on top of his head. Yeah, if we're not going green on the peak on the Pico shaped body parts, it would look very strange. So I'm gonna go with yours. We could also add in the shell, because I forgot about the shell. I wouldn't want to do there. just the shell, though, because then that's Squirtle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
sure we can work that out but um yeah i think that the basis being that hat thing yeah it works easy yeah cool taunts now what you yep. got pico spins two knives and grabs them in place while saying i love the danger okay yep uh i also have a knife one so i'll say that one first uh, Pika will pull out a knife and gaze at it before making two quick swipes in front of him. Nice. Um, Pico pounces chest and shouts, I'll wipe you all out. <laughs> Pika will draw a thumb across his neck in a threatening manner as he says, I'll wipe you all out! Oh, nice. <laughs> the neck. Sweet. Uh... Pico tosses a small ice cream cone into the air and takes it all in one bite, rubbing his tummy while saying, Mmm, delicious. You're not going to believe this. You're not going <laughs> to believe this. But I don't have that. I okay. love it. I don't know if I'll vote for it. But I love it. Because it's like a snapping turtle. So I just imagine he's just like his... His head jumps out like a snapping turtle to grab the ice cream out of the air. Yeah. And that's the image yeah. in my mind. <laughs> I did some research. It's a callback to a fan game, so it's a little cute. Okay. Yeah. To, to an F-Zero fan game? Yes. Okay. To a Pico fan game. A what? What? A Pico fan game. A Pico-themed fan game. Why? <laughs> it's pretty disturbing, honestly, so I don't know. Okay. Well, my last one is Pico will crack his knuckles and laugh with a dark expression on his face. Okay. There you go. Laughing darkly. Yes. Victory poses. Yes. Okay. Here's a here's a wrestling shout out. Pico slams one foot down sumo style and poses towards the camera with his arms outstretched while shouting, Only Smash can quench my thirst for blood. <laughs> Did we do another character recently that had like a, a sumo stance with a victory pose? I feel like that's come up recently. I don't know who it could be off the top of my head. I'm not sure, but I feel like... Maybe it was one that I just... Maybe it was just a character I made in the last year, because I made a 40-something characters last year. Jesus. I just feel like it's familiar. <laughs> uh, but for my first one, we're taking this straight from uh, I, I don't remember where I don't remember where this game plays. It's, it's a little video, a little a little um, a little clip of Pico for F Zero X. I no uh, for GX actually. Pico will be surrounded by uh, these targets all around him. Targets that like look like people, and he's going to be shooting them with his pistol one by one as the camera pans around. One standee will be shot, but the shot goes just above the character's head. And it makes you think, oh, oh, Pico missed. Why, why Pico missed? But then the camera will pan around behind this little standee, and it'll reveal that on the back of it is a drawing of black shadow, and the shot actually went perfectly through his head. <laughs> Pico didn't miss. <laughs> Nice. Um, a faceless young fan is seen asking Pico for his autograph as he stands next to the wild boar after a fight. Well, well won. Pico signs it and says, just one and don't ask me again. I'm sorry, he's standing next to the what? His, his car. The wild goose? Yes. The wild guy rover. Wild goose. Yes, the wild goose. <laughs> My second one. The wild goose will crash onto the stage as Pico ejects himself safely from it and lands next to the smoking wreckage. Nice. Uh, last but not least, Pico holds up a green F-Zero trophy, happily shouting, Sponsor the Pico Cup. And for my last one, Pico will spin his pistol around in his hands before firing a shot straight up into the air and posing with his gun. Nice. 
now comes the fun part. Yep. What are we doing here? How how are we feeling? Uh well first of all, which I'll wipe you all out. Um the neck one is probably more unique to the character. Yeah, I like the neck. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also like your knife one more. The one with the, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that 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 works. Yeah. yeah. I agree. And then for the third taunt, I have cracking its knuckles and laughing, and then you had eating an ice cream cone. Oh, right. Eating ice cream. <laughs> 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 like I love I love the imagery. I don't mm-hmm. know about it here though. Tiebreaker, Smasher Dash fans, what do you think? No, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. It would be very funny. It would it would continue the legacy of F Zero characters having something memeable about them. That's my pitch about it. But if you want to go laughing darkly, I mean, it fits the character. Whatever whatever you feel. Read it to me again. <laughs> Pico tosses a small ice cream cone into the air and snaps it all down in one bite, rubbing his tummy while saying, Mmm, delicious. Or maybe it could be any kind of food. <laughs> I'm. I will not be offended if we go with the, with the knuckles. I'm. I'm having a personal debate in my mind. Let's go to the victory poses first. <laughs> okay. I... <laughs> okay. So obviously the one with the trophy is in. Okay. That one's in. Sponsor the Pico Cup. Uh, you had the other one with the fan asking for his autograph, and Pico acted nicer than I expected him to. What was your first one? Um, the sumo esque one with him saying, "Only Smash can quench my thirst for blood." I like that one as well. Mm-hmm. They're all good. I like your one with the uh, with the kind of like complex shootout with the with the galleries and Black Shadow. That was neat. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I think that's your strongest one that I that I really liked. And I like the other two as well. So, I mean, we, we have a strong selection of six here. Um, I don't really know where to start. Oh, Pico, I I, Pico I, Cup. I, yeah, Pico Cup Pico, is in. Right. Pico Cup is in, is, and so is the uh, the Smash Blood one. Okay. Yeah. Want to go, wanna go for one of yours to round it out then? You want to do the, the shooting gallery one or the autograph, or where are we thinking? Uh, I, I was thinking either the one with the pistol or the whole shooter gallery one. I just wouldn't shoot the shooter gallery one; it was too much. I had wondered that too. Um, maybe if you, just thinking about the animation being a little overlong for a victory pose. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if we cut the the mist shot at the end, even though I like that. Hmm. I think that would be my vote of the two, but I'm gonna defer to you since they're yours. There's something to say for simplicity with shooting the air too. Yeah, I, I'm gonna yeah. say like I'm gonna say let's do the the shoot at one, but I'm going to modify it so he just shoots out. Um, he just shoots like two standees that are both designed to look like Black Shadow, and then he uh, um, twirls his pistol in his hand and then holsters it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then back to the taunt. Okay. Um, <laughs> here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. I don't like rubbing the belly or the quote. <laughs> but tossing the ice cream up and then him snapping turtle, eating it out of the air, I like that. I'm willing to do that part, but not not rubbing the belly or the quote. <laughs> that that's my compromise. He uh he eats the ice cream cone, 
while cracking his knuckles and then laughs darkly. I don't think that makes any logical sense. Okay, I will take your compromise. <laughs> okay. We're we're fucking doing it. <laughs> we're listen, sometimes it's an F zero character. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's maybe the ice cream has a red tint to it, so it's blood flavored. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not? It's a delicacy in some. We don't, some, we don't have to worry about the ESRP. It's fine. Nope. Oh, uh, <laughs> Jesus. Jesus is on the wiki, too. That's true. The Xenoblade, yeah. or the Xenosaga version of him. Yep. All right. Uh, it's special moves time. We got to do the uh, the move set now. The actual attack of the attacks. <sighs> yep. All right, so I mentioned um, that I kind of did Pico similarly to how I approached Black Shadow and Samurai Goro, where, I, where for both of them, I took Captain Falcon as, like, the base skeleton and then modified things from there. It's making them their own unique things. So, like, mm -hmm. Black Shadow has um, Volt, Volt Charge, I think I called it, where it's a headbutting attack with shadow properties. And then Samurai Goro has, uh, God, what was it? Scorpion Sting, I think is what I called it. And it's a stabbing sword attack that has a poison property to the attack. Well, for for Pico, I have Thunder Kick. And you might be wondering, Thunder? What what is what does Thunder or Electricity have to do with Pico? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. But what does fire have to do with Captain Falcon and the Falcon Flyer? Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. The only reason I gave yeah. Samurai Guru poison was because his ship, his Thing is the fire stingray, and well, fire has already been used up, but for stingray, I could imagine poison. So I was like, "Fuck it." And wild goose, that doesn't have anything to do with electricity. But I checked all the other F Zero machine names; none of the other ones applied electricity. I was like, "Fuck it, we're good. We can do electricity here. I'm okay with this." So thunder kick. It's similar to Falcon Punch. Pico's leg will start to charge up with electricity before he does a like, heavy spin a kick around himself. Now, no. I said he does his kick around himself. So he's not just doing a kick forwards. Here's where things get different from Falcon Punch. It's not just a forwards punch attack uh, that you have the option of turning around and doing a reverse Falcon Punch with. No, Thunder Kick is just always going to be all around Pico. But it's a shorter distance than what Falcon Punch can cover. So it's more melee just on either side of you. Uh, electric nice. based attack, obviously. So if you have electric based spears, they would boost the damage for that. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Uh, my move set. I didn't really lean on that that hard. Um, I, I read about the character and was like, okay, he is an assassin and he has these guns. So they have a couple gun-based moves and, and a couple more melee-based moves. So we'll see where this goes. Yep. Uh, my standard is kind of simple. It's the Pori Poto pistols. Pico is enlisted in the Pori Poto army at a time. Where he picked up his skills to become an elite assassin, um, and that's what he calls the standard uh, the standard pistol that he that he carries. It's the Pori Poto pistol. Um, so it's a free aim, pop shot style green energy pistol, um, which I didn't write down as as electricity, but I think that fits. Uh, there you go, and and shoot it and shoot it anywhere, and blam. Actually, <laughs> Pico's guns are realistic guns as well. Mm hmm. So, yeah, my like, didn't I, if they were if they were more energy based guns, I probably would have used them somewhere. somewhere. But when I saw they were mm -hmm. real, like just like realistic yeah. rifles, like ah, uh... yes, mm. yeah, yeah. We will, uh, we will get. But first, yeah. side special, side special, wild charge. Not the Pokemon Not move. The Pokemon. <laughs> Pico will dash towards a short distance. It's kind of like, you know, again, Captain Falcon side special. Uh, if he connects with an opponent, Pico will grab them by the neck and slam them down onto the ground as then Pico kind of like falls over on him. There's the wrestling. Yeah. No. He basically just like, like holds onto them. It's like, 
Smash them. So yeah, that there's a little bit of the wrestling in there. Uh, I didn't want to just make it be a command grab though. So it's like, what can I do with this? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, again, I like it. My side special is called Wild Slammer. This is a uh, so Pico flies forward a, a distance like with Falcon, and with his arm extended out. He grabs the... Just kidding. Uh, but it is called Wild Slammer. Pico dives into his shell and powers forward, spinning in his shell... Out. Yeah. And he slams into foes in his shell. Uh, he can he can grab if you, uh, if you use the side special input again. So you're traveling in the shell forward. Then you choose to use the side special input again. He can leap out from his shell grab a foe, and then slam them into the ground. Okay. So that's the interesting part, where it's like, oh, well, there's actually something here that's very similar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my up special, depending on the situation, is one of two moves. The first one is Goose Drive. <laughs> if an opponent is in front of Pico, he will attempt to grapple them. On a success... He will leap up into the air, uh, holding onto the opponent as he flips them over in his arms so that their head is facing down towards the ground. Once they've reached the height of the jump, the two of them will fall as Pico pile drives the opponent into the ground. Goose drive. Pile driver. Could have called it goose nice. driver as well, actually, now that I think about it. But it's, it's a pile drive attack. Uh, nice. However, if no opponent was next to Pico or the grab fails, then the move becomes goose roll. Pico will now curl up into a ball. I guess you could say he retracts into his shell. I wasn't really sure if he could retract into his shell, which is why I had him roll up into a ball. Uh, but then yeah. he will spring jump himself up into the air with a multi-hitting spin attack, similar to uh, about his Whirling Fortress or to stand with his screw attack. Nice. Okay. My up special. Fuck. My, my up special. Is it a pile driver? My up special is called Pico Pile Driver. It makes sense. It makes sense. Pico grabs an opponent and drives them into the ground in style, head first. This can naturally ground the opponent for a certain amount of time. If he doesn't connect with an opponent, he will retract into a shell and spin upward several feet. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we had we had so much freedom to do whatever with this character, and we made the same thing, more or less, so far. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> well, my dance special is called Thunder Choke, which, hey, look, that sounds a lot like Captain or uh, Ganondorf's Darkness Choke, right? Fuck, mm -hmm. you're right. It does sound a lot like that, but it's the counter, actually. Well, this is a counter. Nice. When successful, Pico will take a portion of the damage. So he's still he's not going to completely negate the damage. He will take a portion of it as he grabs the opponent by their fucking face. So his hand is like grappling their face. Repe repeated attack presses will have Pico uh, grip their face. So it's kind of like he's squeezing their skull. Uh, doing as in while well, he's doing this, he's channeling weak electricity into them, doing like multiple hits of like electroshock therapy essentially. Uh, but alternatively, you can tilt the control stick, and Pika will instead throw them a short distance. Uh, by tilting the control stick um, up, they will be tossed slightly up into the air. Uh, tilting it back will cause them to be tossed backwards a short distance uh, over his shoulder. Uh, tilting it forward, he will shove them back. And if you tilt downwards, he will slam their head down onto the ground. Nice. Very nice. I like that. And we veer readily with our down specials. Mine is the Poripoto pistol. Again? Or rather, the Poripoto sniper. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he uh, pulls out his sniper rifle and aim. you can aim to control it with, the, with a reticle. Easily telegraphable, but very powerful. Um... Again, don't have the ammo type. I don't think it should be realistic. If we went this route, it should be like an electric charge because screw it. 
Um, yeah, and and maybe where you place the reticle increases damage or something. I don't know. Um, but either way, uh, if you use the move in midair, um, Pico will eject a parachute and slowly fall to the ground while while using the pistol while using the rifle. That way, you can still free aim and not have to worry as much. Okay. Yeah. Final smash time. Yep. Mine is called Wild Goose Chase. <laughs> the wild goose will charge by, creating a cinematic for whoever it hits, just like, you know, Captain Falcon's Blue Falcon does. Uh... Fighters will be knocked into Untitled Goose Game, where the goose will steal their shit. Wait, no, shit. Wrong goose. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, they're actually knocked onto the Deathwind course, because that's where Pico is from. And they mm -hmm. will be attempting to run away while they are on the course. But, unfortunately for them, Pico is in the Wild Goose, and it is speeding up towards them. Uh, when it approaches, <laughs> the, the camera will zoom into the cockpit, or more like, not necessarily in it, but like where you'll be able to see Pico inside, and he will be laughing maniacally as he's just like pushing different buttons and pulling levers, and as the camera pans back out to see what the, what's happening, you'll see several miniguns pop out from the side of the wild goose, which begin to just send out a spray of bullets towards the fighters before the wild goose runs them over and knocks them out. That's where I put the guns. Mini guns that just pop nice. out of the side. Nice, nice. Mine is uh, pretty tame by comparison. You, you had the macabre this time. That was neat. Very entertaining. Um, we put the gingerbread in the oven and they kill the <laughs> fighters with that. Or we put them on the fucking offering table and we have them flat light. Jesus Christ, Jono. <laughs> in a similar vein. No, I wish it were. Um, this is just a final smash as as they were. This is, and I didn't even title it spectacularly. It's just wild goose. Anyway, he hops into the wild goose. He uh, comes onto the stage, does the thing that Captain Falcons does, where you can uh, position the wild the, the yeah you cat you catch characters in its initial in its initial flight in. Um, but this one isn't a CG. It, uh, thing on Deathwind with the chase, which is cool. Uh, it's just flying everywhere, all over the stage, and in, in X patterns, and you can catch other foes in it while you're flying around. And then eventually, you stop that, and they fly and stuff. Very simple, very cotton on a but a car. Yeah, I was gonna say this sounds like um, Pikachu's Volt Tackle or Sonic Supersonic. I didn't even think of that when I did it, but yes, you're right. Oh, well, <laughs> extra skill is next. Mm -hmm. Mine is called Run Wild. Pika will let out a loud shriek before dashing forwards a long distance until he either runs into another fighter or hits the edge of the, of the platform he's on. Pika will then unleash a series of wild punches and kicks the player cannot interrupt or cancel out of you are locked into this berserk state once route once red wild is activated he's locked into it until something else knocks him out or his series of attacks is over so this would be multiple seconds long where he is just locked into this animation unless somebody else frees you from it uh if pico is uh Oh, if Pico does manage to hit, then the combined attacks will deal a high amount of damage with an ending uppercut that sends the opponent uh, skyward up into the air because if they're hit by the other attacks, they'll be trapped into it until that final hit. But if he misses, he's quite literally going to be a sitting duck until the attack ends. Like, somebody could be charging for smash attack on your ass and you can't do anything about it. You're stuck. Mm -hmm. Doria, out of here, man. Mm. <laughs> That's cool. That's unique, actually. That's I like that. Um, mine is called... I had different names for it, but I'm going to go with uh, Electric Knife. Because that's what it is. Okay. 
Kiko um, has a knife gauge underneath his uh, character portrait, and he run as he works his way through the battle and and racks up points by like pitting things. The knife gauge fills up. When it fills up, use the extra skill to electrify the ni- the the knife he's using and make it dish out electric damage in all of his standard attacks. That's all. That's it. You sound so okay. Dis- you sound so disappointed in yourself. <laughs> well, I made this move set in thirty minutes, so. And I made me. mine in forty. Nice. <laughs> it's. Like, at first, I was like, oh, no, we're recording in two days. I don't have anything. I need to figure this out. Four minutes later, it's like, oh, wow, that was... How did I do that? Wait a minute. <laughs> what the hell? Mm-hmm. Right. So what what <laughs> moves are we using, then, between our two movesets? That's a good... Okay, so a couple things here. Mm-hmm. The final stats and extra skill, absolutely yours. Okay. Yep, easy. From there, well, we literally we literally have the same move for the up special. Uh, with the, yeah. With aesthetic changes, sure. But besides that, it is the same move. Yeah. And then I'd also is... say our side specials are very similar as well, but I think yours has the extra, um, the extra edge on it. I would agree. I would agree, just uh, with the shell and and knowing that he's this turtle thing. I I thought it was a nice nod. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, naturally, the goose drive or whatever you called the pile. Was that it, the pile driver? Goose drive? Goose roll? Yeah, goose drive. Um, Might change it to goose driver and goose roll. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I like that name. Let's go for that. Um, and then it's just a case of guns versus, versus no guns or a gun or whatever. Yeah. That, that's pretty much the debate here. Um, and I kind of, I feel like it's clear in at least one instance, while, while the Poripoto pistol or pistols, you can maybe do dual, um, that's iconic to the character it's something he's known for holding in a lot of art and whatever um i i actually really like thunder kick i think that's a great aoe attack that is again like not usual not yeah. something a lot of people yeah. come up with um and i think that that should be the standard special myself as for the down special there's something so brutal about the thunder choke like that's that's like almost more like whoa than him pulling out a rifle it's like wow that's pretty that's pretty brutal um but again i like it i i like it a lot do we give him a nod with a gun i think this is the one to do it with but i also think thunder choke is the is the stronger move i'm okay to go either way i mean what the thing with the guns we do have he does have the gun in uh two victory animations Mm -hmm. uh actually or is it just one i think it might just be with just one now um, and you could say, like, oh, well, Gandorf has the darkness choke, and you're just doing this now? It's like, yes, but this works differently. This is the counter right. technique. Right. And uh, it's not just grab him once and then the attack's over. It's no, you, it's, it's, it's a, essentially, it's a counter slash command grab is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, the trade-off between a normal grab is I assumed it would be more powerful than a normal grab damage-wise. Because right. you have to earn it, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it helps to play into a little bit of the physical viciousness besides just guns, which is like, you, you see one gun, you see all guns. They, they all, the, all the guns do the same gun thing. It, it's really hard to make multiple gun based characters be unique. Yeah. Joker has a toy gun or a gun. Yeah. And it shoots out, um, a short, immediate projectile, mm-hmm. and then he can do like some flip tricks with it. Right. But like, right. what could you do for a Call of Duty character to make them different from a Medal of Honor character or a Tom Clancy character, or 
Like in, any any other gun thing, like you're not going to go with Call of Duty. You're going to go with Halo or Gears of War or Doom. You're not going to do normal Snake. Mm-hmm. There's a reason. There's even even if we assume that Sakurai wasn't not allowed to use um, guns for Snake, which we don't really know for sure. Kevin, giving Snake guns would have been very boring for him. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, and in this case, I think they would work for the character, but um, yeah, I again yeah. like like the thunder choke better. Like having a gun be like part of a move that I think can work, but have it be just mm-hmm. that it's like, eh. Mm-hmm. If the character's dependent on it, so be it. But otherwise, it can be more creative. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Like it, it was. It was a stretch. I mean, it was. Luckily, Ocelot is is such a. Uh, character. Yeah, o- you know, also it's a big character, mm-hmm. and he's also got the mm-hmm. trick shots. Like that that guy, mm-hmm. Ocelot's a theater kid. <laughs> Ocelot yeah. is a theater yeah. kid. He is. Yep. Yep. Like, <laughs> that man loves to perform, and mm-hmm. we love him for that it. <laughs> um, this is the inverse of Mock Rider. Mock Rider, you uh, you dominated the toss and victory poses, and I dominated the move set. This is literally this is the exact opposite case. Yeah. One episode after it, so that's pretty. That's a nice balance. Interesting. What are, what and I and I like next it. Next character. Who is our next one? Our it's... next character, the Gex, will dominate the episode. Ah, that character. That character that yeah. I know very little about. Mm. That's gonna be some research. Who is the character again? Oh, yeah, that character. Yeah. <laughs> that one. I played the game where you fight that character, and I don't remember. <laughs> like oh, anything. boy. Yeah. That's going to be a but, fun hey. episode. Yep. Yep. I predict a lot of pasta in the future. Okay. So that's our move set. We've got all that figured out. Um, do we want to give Pico any unique traits? Uh, I don't have anything for him written down. He's kind of a big, bulky turtle. So, well, I guess not compared to Bowser, but he's a he's a <laughs> turtle man. I don't really see him doing a bunch of this stuff. Mm-hmm. He can swim. He can swim indefinitely because he's a turtle. No, no. Yeah. No, no swimming indefinitely. Okay. It's too, it's too easy to turtle in a match like that. <laughs> uh... <laughs> All right, alt costumes. Uh, it's just simple read colors, right? I didn't have anything else down. Yeah. Nothing special. He, yeah, it's just... He's not the kind of guy to get dressed up in leopard or dressed up as Blood Falcon for some reason. So. Nah. I mean, I figure you could, like, as a start... <laughs> take his three alts from GX, and it's like, okay, we're just going to import these, and then we'll make uh, other alts that match that same setup. Yeah. Boom. Done. There you go. Yep. Definitely. And beyond that, we only have one last thing to debate here. What's Pico's home stage? Deathwind. Is it Deathwind? Yeah, isn't it? Are you sure? Yeah, what what else what, would you have down? Do you have a concept? No. <laughs> do you? I have a half baked idea. Okay. That idea is that it's Deathwind. <laughs> but but not Deathwind from F Zero. Not Deathwind from F Zero X. Not Deathwind from F Zero GX. Deathwind from F099. <laughs> so there's going to be so there would be like the um like the golden the golden car obstacle thing. I don't remember what that's called what that's called. But I want to in, I've been wanting to try and make an F099 stage that uses those mechanics and I just, I haven't really done anything with it yet, but I think Pico uh Deathwind. I think that's a good opportunity to do that. So it would have that NES design to it, but it's got it would have the uh, F zero ninety nine golden car thing mechanic involved somehow. 
Nice. That that's that's my pitch. Uh, go for it. I like that. Yes. F099. They got their chance today. Yeah. That was a breezy episode. Yeah. Like a turtle yeah. Uh I don't I definitely didn't anticipate this one being that easy. I thought we were gonna have more variants. Right. I thought you were going to lean in harder on the wrestling uh, after I had backed off of it. But then we both just did pile driver. It's like, well, if you're gonna do one wrestling thing, it's gonna be pile driver. Yeah. And then Th- Thunder yeah. Joke is arguably wrestling. Mm-hmm. And Wild Charge kind of was. But, yeah. It, it's an F Zero character. It's rather simple. You don't got to yeah. do anything too crazy. If we wanted to do something with crazy, we would have done a character like Super Arrow or the Skull. Right. Absolutely. Maybe another day. Maybe. I mean, who knows? Season 8, we might do uh, Daisengen. Yeah. Mr. EAD as well. Octoman. Yeah. From Splatoon. There's nothing called Octoman in Splatoon. There should be. Well, I mean, there's Octolings and DJ Octavio and Octoballer and Octopods. Just literally Octoman from F Zero. Just throw him into Splatoon 4. No, no. He's going to be in Metroid Prime 4 instead of Silux. Just. <laughs> Just for no reason, it's Octo Man instead. Just just <laughs> to make the Silux fans upset. That's okay, I get it, Silux fans. But Octo Man, look look at his arms. Look at the way they move. Mm. So Love interesting. Tentacles. Oh, God. <laughs> that on that note. <laughs> ah, ah. On that note. Uh, we got a little, nothing else to talk about with Pico here. Uh, yeah. Next episode, it's a Smasher Dash. Yeah. Uh, we're taking two characters from the Earthbound series, and we're taking two characters from the WarioWare series, and we're making them fight to the death. Yeah, we are. Yep. Whichever one lives yeah. gets out of the Smash. Also, we'll have an answer on our tiebreaker from the uh, last Whoa. Smash test where we had two ties, and I was upset about it. I was like, God damn it. Why are we making things yeah. complicated? What'll be interesting is if we have a tie again in this match, I just keep doing it this next episode. Please, no. <laughs> uh, we have cool graphics to go with it now that I made in Canva for the Super Cast Brothers Discord server, anyway. Yeah. Join us on Discord in the episode description on YouTube. Is it in the description? Yeah. I don't know. You make the description that I don't, and I don't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I just copy and paste it into the field. Been there from day one, as well as credits to all of our friends who helped us along the way. We don't have any friends. Hmm. Well, there's Kelly. That's true. It's more like That's an true. intern, I suppose. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but he did. He did make all the new episode thumbnails and. That's, and, um... it, that's just, dude. Oh. Spoilers! Those aren't done yet because you haven't done your oh. part. Oh! Ah. <laughs> well, now that that teaser is there, I guess uh, we'll see you all in the next episode. Bye, everyone. I got a Jono to punish. <laughs> Insert what prac sound here. <laughs> Whoops.